Hi everybody, it's Daniel with Fun Ukulele Projects and I have both of my Favia teardrops right here and I will play a couple pieces on them so you can hear the difference between them and I'll tell you some of my observations. Actually, a couple of my observations I'll mention first and I'll demonstrate first. Uh, once again, this is more than likely like a laminate birch. Uh, it, I might have to tune it in the middle of this video. Tuning was really stable, but I wanted to double check because it always looked like laminate to me and it, I couldn't quite tell from the sides and it looked like it here, but, it, but the cutting was a little rough. So I loosened the strings and I sanded very carefully and took photos and this is definitely a laminate instrument. So if you have a natural birch, uh, you can look at the sides and you'll see as the grain comes down uh, and, you know, as it goes off the ends and you'll see the side grain on the sides of the sound hole. Uh, here you actually see the wood on the top and the wood on the bottom and whatever the fill wood was. Um, the reason I mention that is that, you know, I'm going to be sharing a comparison between the painted teardrops and a solid mahogany. I don't have a solid birch teardrop to compare with the solid mahogany. I know someone that has one, but uh, that person doesn't live anywhere near me. One of the things that I've noticed immediately when playing this the first time was, as I mentioned in the other video, look at the fret markers. <laughs> If there's not a lot of light, I really have trouble seeing this. It, it's so much so that I might even put just a tiny bit of acrylic or something that uh, here, just three spots for playing, something that, that can easily be wiped off and not mess up the finish. Or I'll just get used to it. This is really easy to see. The Birch model has, I, I think it's black fret markers there, very easy to see. The other thing that I'll mention is that when playing them, at least from where I'm sitting, the, the black one tends to have a, a warmer sound. It's definitely not as loud. Another thing that comes up in some songs, although I don't think it'll come up so much in what I'm playing, uh, is that the C really drops off. You hear it all at once and then it just it drops quickly with, with this model. So if you're playing songs where you need that C to be a droning C, then it, it, it does not work quite as well as, as this one here. This has a very steady decay. This is a more resonant instrument. It's a much lighter instrument. As I mentioned in the last video, the bracing, even though the bracing is shaped in this, it, it's much more delicate bracing inside the mahogany model. The mahogany model is in some ways a little more challenging to play. It's more rewarding when you get things right because it's more sensitive than the solid, than, than the, the painted model for uh, where my hand position is when I'm strumming. And um, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna, it's gonna be really boring if all I'm doing is stuff like that. So uh, I'm just saying that, that it, it is just a little more sensitive. And uh, it, it's one of those things where, where it has like a sweet spot in general, like most ukuleles, you know, uh, right where the neck meets the body. And at the same time, some songs I'm playing, uh, or if I'm, it's fun to do. I won't do it on video because it's it's a bit of a challenge for my big hands. But playing the version of Canon and D that my wife and I play uh, spends a good amount of time up, you know, from between the seventh and the twelfth fret. A lot of it's in the seventh and tenth fret, uh, and it's a challenge with this. And, and and you can make a different sound significantly. They all sound nice, but you can really get a different richness depending on where you're playing. And there's just a little more evenness here, but the, 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 the high notes are richer on this one. Uh, it's just a little thing. It's not that, it's not that like this is 100% better than this one. That's what I'm sort of saying. 
This one is a, is, has a richer sound to it for certain songs. This one has a warmer sound that's really complementing other songs. And this one is a little more uniform when playing uh, in this area, you know, playing up from here to here. It's a little more uniform if you're moving back and forth, which is great for someone like myself that, that's switching sides of instruments fairly regularly. I primarily play tenors, as you all know, yet I do have concerts, I do have sopranos, and the sopranos I have range in scale length uh, and in, in width and, and whatnot. So it's, uh, it's just, if I'm jumping from one to the other, uh, you know, I'll play this one and I think it sounds so wonderful, then I'll play that one as I go, that sounds nice. Or sometimes I'll play that one and think, well, that didn't sound, it doesn't sound much better than this. And I play this one second, but then I pick that one back up and it's like, oh, wow, it's a completely different instrument. So I'll just play, I like I'll play Sinoe, uh, Sweet Hour Prayer, something I play with a lot of these vintage instruments. I'll play those and we'll see how those go on. And I'm probably talking too much already. But anyway, I'll start with the painted model. Here's Sweet Hour Prayer.
I did uh, Roxy's Waltz in the other video. I'll try it again uh, in this video. start that over. the first half there's the second half that's up at the seventh and eighth fret and moves down um, I won't take the time to play that right now it's a really fun little instrument here I'm just gonna do a strum that generic strum so you can hear what these things sound like strummed didn't sound as good on the recording as it does here because this is so loud it clips the mic. We had to adjust the mic so that this would pick up closer and uh, in, in doing that we, you know, this one when strumming, you know, rather enthusiastically is clipping a bit. Anyway, these are the two Favia teardrops. It's not that one is you know better in terms of playing they're both really fun to play as I said before uh, for me when I'm not wearing my glasses this one's easier to play because of these big dots I can see um, they're both really fun to play they're both wonderful little instruments if you ever have a chance to get a hold of a Fivia teardrop or if you ever have a chance to find one and play it for a little bit by all means do so and um, <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing in the not too distant future because shortly after I won this auction, it's been like Favia month for me. <clears throat> I won an auction on an all solid double bout Favia soprano. And it needs work. It has a big crack going right under the bridge. Uh, and someone, someone originally you know, reset the bridge and they did the right thing. They put it in the right spot. But on that particular instrument, they didn't clean the glue up, but it has to come off anyway for me to be able to fix the crack. Once that's done, I'll be doing a video explaining that project. Uh, it has uh, some other unique issues. And then I'll also do a video comparing the traditional Vafia Favia with the teardrop. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comparison. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you in the next video.